Let's see. The, the Hunger Games continue. The person has passed the exam. <sighs> Another 38 and it'll finally be over. But not that many people from UA have passed, right? Just uh, Todoroki, I think. Beginning of the test, we focused on attacking UA, splitting them up and putting them in check right off the bat. This is interesting. We're getting the other students' perspective now. They're being built. And we're at the final stage of the test. They're kind of being framed as enemies right now, but pretty sure they're going to play an increasing role in the show. And my petty rivalries aside, they're going to be heroes, right? They're good kids. Your attack kind of backfired. We didn't take out any of those kids. All these people look like Pokemon to me. That's Cubone. We basically already passed the test. It's about time you stop pretending to pride. be so nice. Honestly, you're too sneaky, yo. I'd prefer to be called tactful. Besides, if we swoop in at Those the 11th hour and make it a good show. <laughs> Why do I have to comment on the abs every time? I don't know. You way high. I have respect for your school. I take pride in the fact oh, yeah, this that our loaf thing. are treated as The equal. weirdest and most disturbing quirk. What is it, exactly? AP shot! Auto cannon! He's already, like, modified the quirk he learned in the last couple episodes. This is why everyone's terrified of you. You're way too hardcore. Yeah, yeah, he learned so quickly. He's the type who reacts impulsively to a simple provocation. It's so this disturbing. Sort of this has got to be a human, right, a human rights violation. Pride. Are they conscious in, in this bread form? <laughs> this is a good matchup for Bakugo because he gives him things to shoot. Fight over with. Maybe this will speed things along. <laughs> Should work on your reign. No, he meant to do that, didn't he? Fix this! Pathetic. You must be remade from They scratch. are still conscious. This is terrible. High School. Meatball. Seiji Shishikura. I I sort of hate it. <laughs> I don't like it. It's disturbing. I feel like in real life what happens with this kid is he applies and they just accidentally misplace his application. But are they edible? I feel like that is important information. <laughs> This is a weird world that we live in. With All Might retired, wouldn't it make more sense to flood the streets with heroes? And so, we right. must assume that their goal is to weed out the riffraff. We can surmise that they're starting to be more selective in order to bring the profession of hero to a higher level. I'm simply separating the mediocre and extraordinary. Mediocre, get it? Mediocre? This ain't really one, it seems. I mean, I may be misunderstanding it still, but haven't we lost the point somewhere? I mean, isn't the, the real objective to help as many people as possible and not select for some kind of purity of spirit? You know what I mean? One of the statistics Sleepy Guy hit us with was the fact that crimes are getting solved too early or too quickly. Isn't that ideal for the population? It would make more sense if it's for financial reasons, like it's the government, they have a budget, but that doesn't seem to be an issue. It seems to be more a principle thing, and isn't this the villain's winning in a, in a sense? Didn't they just change society? Back to the classic Erwin Smith question, who gets to choose? Who gets to be the judge of who's actually a good hero or not? If only there was some way we could evaluate a hero's performance. Oh wait, there is. The ability to help people, you know what I mean? Like, the ability to prevent harm, or stop crimes, or solve crimes, or whatever. That seems a little bit more quantifiable, if nothing else, than this like, well, are you really pure? Are you really a hero? Do you really care? How much money did you earn last year? Etc. By the way, your comrades here still feel pain in this form. That is the worst part of it, I think. The fact that they're aware that they're meatballs right now. I'm kind of starting to take it personally, you know. This would be great to have like a Kaminari moment. That's it. He tossed it to you. Oh, nice. By the way, big shot. <laughs> you stumbled into behind a really him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot. It was intentional. Sharp shooting? I can't really manipulate electricity. That's actually pretty so damn it's cool. Hard to fight with other people around. This is a big development for him. Yeah, speaking of developments, I like it. As long as you're within 10 meters of the spot you've tagged, your electricity will be gathered in a single line. That is awesome. You actually had us on your mind. Listen up. Bakugo might seem like a total jerk on the surface. <laughs> but he's to the actually right trying now. really hard to be a pro hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threw that grenade to me while being attacked. Oh, is there a timer? Blast. Oh, he's losing his uh, his control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You degenerate! Nice. The more damage he takes, the more people get released. Thanks for the save, Kaminari. You idiot. What took so long? <laughs> Why are you so In other mean? words, no thank you. gonna like you if you act that way. I like how this is no longer just the Bakugo Kirishima duo, and it's becoming somewhat of a trio with Kaminari. It's a pretty good fit, actually. And I'm glad to see Kaminari actually get a moment, you know, get a solo moment. Just 30 spots left. I hope everyone in our class passes. I don't think that's gonna happen. What is this guy's deal? Dead. I gave some tape to Uraraka and had her set some snares for us. 
Oh, whoa! I said to get as many as great possible, idea. Good job, Sarah. Nuts. Yeah. In order to make sure that no one was in a spot where they'd get crushed by the green, <laughs> I, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Perfect timing. Okay, we needed that explanation actually. You guys are first years, right? But what's the catch? Come on, can't you give us a break? We have to earn our provisional hero licenses this time around. Ooh, that kind of hurts. That's exactly the right thing to say to Deku too. <laughs> Sorry, but so do oh, I. Oh, that's true. I mean, he has a lot riding on this. This is more than just, you know, a career for him. This is life. It's a matter of life and death. How's Ayama doing? UA is always heavily targeted from the get-go, but so far all of those students are still on the board. <coughs> it's pretty amazing that no one's been eliminated. There he is, hiding as he often does, as he is wont to do. How do you even think you'll find people out here? And what are you going to do if everyone left behind passes without you? This is sort of a long time coming. I mean, it's been a little bit of a joke, but he's been shown to hide a lot. What is his deal? He talks such a big game, too. You know, he's all like rainbows and sparkles and disco balls, but I wonder what this is about. It actually has the potential to be interesting. I mean, this is My Hero Academia, where there, you know, there are no small classmates except for Invisible Girl. So, you know, all my jokes about Ayama aside, I would like to see him actually address whatever this thing is. It's my duty to lead the others. I want to serve our peers to the best of my abilities. That's what my brother would do. And I feel like this would be a great thing for Ayama too. I could see that being a really great help to him because maybe the reason why he's hesitating is because he's focusing so heavily on himself and what the test means for him. One of the reasons why other students are able to do so well in this class is because they think first about their obligations to others, which for some weird reason can be more motivating than thinking about your own needs. You know, it's sort of easy to put yourself last. Somehow you can get away with that more mentally. You can get away with sort of taking the hit. Harder for a lot of people, I think, to stomach letting other people down. I mean, not always, obviously, but as someone who's really big on like, you using dreams as a way to push myself forward, you know, like envisioning things that are really great that make the difficulties of life or maybe the more mundane elements of my goals more palatable and more exciting. One thing that almost always works for me is conceptualizing the good I can do for other people when successful. The people who I feel like have always been there for me, people who I feel like I could never repay but would like to at least try or make some gesture towards showing my appreciation. And that often feels even better than what I imagine doing for myself with success. And I would argue that's probably something that makes these kids so special is that they're not doing what people are accusing heroes of doing, of being very self-centric. They are doing it for other people, especially the people they know. And I don't know what's going on with Aoyama, but I can imagine that would be a really great thing to focus on. You know, it, it takes the focus away from his own fears and his own failure and whatever this is and towards something that he can do that would make him feel great and is sort of like objectively amazing. You know what I'm saying? It's through my actions that I'll realize my ultimate dream. Your ultimate dream? Maybe he's farther behind than I thought. Does he have nothing to connect it to? Oh yeah, Class A represent! Well, these are some Don't key people who passed. Our class is amazing! We did it! Class 1A! Class 1A! I mean, they've earned it. Class so you passed too. How'd you manage <laughs> that, Deku? I bet he's happy, actually. I'm starting to see the subtitles. Guess I shouldn't be surprised with that quirk you got. <gasps> that whoa, that was a huge compliment. Wait, oh my god. Hold on. Yeah, that was What did he say? Yeah. You've made that borrowed power your own. <sighs> that sounds like he's figured it out. At least to some extent. That was the nicest thing <laughs> anybody's ever said to Deku. <laughs> Coming from Bakugo. When did you guys pass? You been here long? We just finished as well. They beat the world's stupidest smart people. Kinda shocked Bakugo wasn't here already. But I get it now. It's because you were with him. Oh, come on! Why is everyone dragging me today? <laughs> yeah, one of the jokes continues. Looks like only 11 from our class have passed. So nine more to go. I mean, that's a very large percentage, though. It's a disproportionate number. Come on, guys. I mean, it's okay. You know, like, I don't know. It's their first year. Oh, here we go. If this turns into a war, it's going to be very <laughs> hard for both of us to survive it. Just leave me here. What are you talking about? Keep fighting! Well, he went into that sacrifice thing really quickly. He leaned all the way into that. <laughs> we're finished with <laughs> Great shot. Those eight were all from my class. See them? They're headed they into the through. room. Yeah, they're, they're being built for something. Kiddos! Looks like our class still has nine people who haven't passed. That's pretty remarkable. Eden not passing would kind of, a, kind of be a big deal, though, I think. Your ultimate dream. Yeah, yeah. Papa, Mama. Why am I so different from everybody else? Oh, oh, good, there is something. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but I'm relieved at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he had to just stick that mm in there for good measure. Behold my tummy beam. What are you doing? I'm standing out, yes. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. His biggest fear being different. It hits so many notes in like 30 seconds. With your speed, you should be able to hit their targets. Where is this even coming from? From you, Ida. From Something you. you said earlier yeah. inspired me. Yeah, let him have this chance. No, let him do it. I mean, this is great. This is maybe the best thing that could have possibly come out of this for him. It's more important than his license. What, what manner of what Attack those? on Titan quirk is this? <laughs> I don't like it. Thank you, birds. Oh, Let's nice. This area. His voice is still throwing me off. Nice. Welcome to the world of sticky balls. Oh my god, that was actually really cool. Yeah, this is amazing. Earn some points back, Invisible Girl. <laughs> I'm willing to accept you back with open arms. Prove me wrong. She actually would be great in this challenge specifically. Everyone was going nuts and getting desperate in the final minutes. I couldn't see anything. I rallied them in a way. I like how they recognized it was Ayama's tummy beam. I guess it's pretty unmistakable. They probably heard his grunts too, from all the way across the arena. Next yes! Five. The pressure's on now. Mineta has a chance. <laughs> Are Ooh, they... that one's in from okay, so yeah. Kami, Kami, gotta keep an eye on her. I don't know who you want to be equal with, because I don't know what you're measuring yourself against. But this was your doing. Thank you! <laughs> That's a great shot. I guess this means my twinkling won't have to stop after all. Well, that's certainly a way to phrase it. Whatever that means. <laughs> exactly. 100 students will advance! The wow. end is finally here! <laughs> well, that was way more inspiring than it had any right to be. Who would have thought that Tummy Beam Ayama would have a moment? One of the things that makes these moments so great for me is that you don't even know where it starts. Like, I'm always going to give power to the person who makes the decision, you know? So credit goes to Ayama. But we don't exist in a vacuum, right? So what was the trigger for him to make the decision? It was largely Ida. But where did Ida get it? You know, Ida got it from Deku and from countless other students. And where do they get it? You know, largely from All Might. Where did All Might get it from, etc. You know, it's sort of the playing out in real time of one of the major themes of the show, which I think is also symbolized by One for All. And also, in some sense, missed by One for All. You know, it's it's not just one person. It's definitely a circle, right? But I think one good place to start is with the individual choice. You know, I think that's where sort of the magic happens, for me at least, in the way I think about it. But from there, it spreads out and helps facilitate other good individual choices. And, you know, it works the other way too. Things get worse depending on people's individual choices. And I like that way of thinking about it because it means that moment to moment, there's always a choice. I mean, I think we don't focus on the choice nature of life enough. And I think that it is true that circumstance plays you know, a tremendous role. But I think one big element inhibiting choice is the lack of knowledge that there are choices. Not thinking to a large enough degree about our personal responsibility moment to moment. But how else do you even get there? How do you create the maximum potential for understanding personal choice then to live that way and to talk about it and to give other people the benefit of the doubt when it comes to their own autonomy and their ability to make their own decisions. And I think that's part of the reason why moments like this are so inspiring. Like, it didn't happen in a vacuum, but Aoyama definitely made what was probably a very difficult choice in that moment. We saw briefly, but clearly, that he has a fear of standing out. And I think for some people in those situations, the takeaway from that, or the explanation of that, would have been, I had no choice, right? But actually, there was a choice for him, it was just very difficult. And in doing so, he actually continued this cycle of like helping other people and rallying people to his cause. So it's very, very satisfying to watch. And amazingly, I underestimated UA again, even with all my cheerleading, somehow. Oh yeah, they earned it. That's so proud of us. pretty amazing. We really pulled it off, you guys. You really did. They just had to keep me on the edge of my seat, huh? <laughs> we are training so hard when we get back. I love how it wasn't good enough. Well, well, well. <laughs> I was sitting here wondering all the different ways it could go and, you know, who would make it and who didn't make it and how it might create rifts if some people passed and other people didn't and how that would create issues for the villains going forward. But we just got that right out of the way. It seems like part of it is a logistical thing. I'm just like, we're never getting out of year one, so we got to take care of this when we can. It's surprising, but also not surprising at the same time. And I don't just mean because they're the, the main characters and they're, the, you know, the heroes of our story. It feels deserved. Like I have said that they are just at a different level and it's not because of the school. It's not because of their brand name. Really, it's because of the experiences they've they've had and the fact that this class was selected really well. They were kind of just like this. And I think that's often the case with prestigious schools. It's not really so much about the institution, although that can often be a big factor. One of the biggest draws is just that it, it attracts people who are really hardworking and really gifted. You know? And that's definitely what UA did. But even that, I think, pales in comparison to just the experiences they've had and the growth they've done during the span of the show. 
Oh, we got an end credit sequence. Huh? What do you mean Shishikura didn't pass the test? Tone it down. It's because he went ahead of us and fought alone like he didn't need help. This guy is legit a Wookiee. For the hundred of you who passed the first test, please turn your attention to the screen. Oh, it's the test. Oh, no, is there a twist? What's gonna happen next? Is there a part two? Did I just say all that for nothing? Here you were celebrating. There's only one more round to the exam. Oh no, I got so got. A rescue mission. I got so had, I got so used by that. <laughs> I'm all like celebrating with them. Although they still could all pass, right? So yeah, that ends the, the Battle Royale Hunger Games Maze Runner part of this arc. And in typical My Hero Academia fashion, there's a lot going on. They're definitely building these, these side characters, these other schools. This is not the last we're seeing of them. In fact, we're seeing it from their perspective. Some great quirk growth. Certain characters that I like stepping up into the spotlight, like Kaminari. And then this amazing moment from Aoyama, which I really didn't expect, but was very, very inspiring and kind of cool. Also hinting at a backstory, which I, you know, I hope we get. I could definitely watch an Aoyama episode. But yeah, that's it for episode 18. I'll see you guys next time when we begin this second round of the tournament, the rescue arc.